Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your map. Uh, to do that, you just, I believe it's the Alt button you press while you're in the flight simulator, and then um, there will be an option at the top called World, and then if you click that, there will be a drop down to Map, and you're going to want to open this, and then from there, uh, you're going to want to click on the airport you want to land at, and we'll show you what it looks like from there. So once you click on the airport you want to land at, uh, you'll, it'll give you a list of the runways, um, the length, the surface, the ILS ID, which you don't really need to worry about too much, but the ILS frequency, which is right here, uh, 110.1, 111.75, and 110.3. Um, either one of those, you're going to want to copy that down on a piece of paper or something so you have it, or if you can remember it, that's fine. But uh, yeah, whatever runway you want to land on, copy that ILS frequency, and that's what you need to start. See you back in Flight Simulator. Okay, now that we're in the airplane uh, and you have your ILS frequency, we now need to put it into our navigational system. So if you open up your uh, radio panel, which if you uh, press your Alt key on your keyboard and then you come up and you press Views, and then um, you click Radio Stack, and now my radio stack is open, uh, there's a, a bunch of... Um, sets of areas where you can input frequencies here but the one you're going to want to use is the one here that says nav 1 and in the standby you're going to want to put that frequency that you uh, retrieved in this box here so mine that I need to put in is uh, 109.9 so now that um, now that we know that um, we've got it in, if we switch it over to the active, that means the airplane is currently looking for that frequency. And if you come down here and you press this button uh, that says Nav 1, that's not what activates it, but that's what can, uh, if, if your airplane is in range of it, it'll make a sound so that you know. So let's try and put that on and see if we're in range of the ILS. It'll take a few seconds once we put it on. Okay, so now we know that the airplane uh, is in range of the ILS, so uh, at this point we're basically done with the radio stack. And uh, by the way, I, t I take that button off just so I don't have to keep listening to that sound, but the, the ILS frequency is still active, so we'll take that off. And at this point, you're going to want to line up with the, the ILS runway as best you can. So at this point, you're going to want to start setting your plane up for uh, landing. So um, if you want to start slowing down, and then once we get on the ILS, that's when you can start putting your, your gear down and your flaps down and whatnot. Also, you're going to want to make sure that you're not too high because your airplane is going to follow the glide slope. So if you're at like 7,000 feet and you're only um, a short distance away from the airport, it's not going to it's not going to work because it's not going to find the glide slope and you're just going to fly right over the airport. So you only want to be, you know, 3,000 feet max above the runway when you engage the ILS. And all I've got to do now is I will just, um, I'm going to put this approach hold button on here. And I'm going to put the autopilot back on. And it should start lining itself up with the runway. Okay. So I've engaged the autopilot again, and it looks like the airplane is 
uh, going in line up with the runway. And once it does, I'm going to start uh, lowering the speed and bringing the flaps and gear down. Let's make sure that we're still in range of the... Uh, oh, actually, there it goes. So I'm not controlling the plane right now, it is doing that by itself. So now we know that it's intercepting the, um, the localizer, and once it starts descending, you'll know it's, um, it's following the glide slope. Okay, now the plane should start descending here in a moment to follow the glide slope. There we go, it looks like the plane is starting to follow the glide slope. So from here on out, the airplane is basically going to do all the work for you until you get um, just a, a couple hundred feet above the runway and then you'll disengage the autopilot and the auto throttle if you're using it and fly the rest manually. GPS now, I, or take my GPS off now as I don't need it, because I can see the runway, and I'm going to bring this down to 145, and I'm going to bring the rest of my flaps down. Now make sure you arm your, um, your spoilers, if you want to do that, you press shift, and then you're like, Shift question mark key, and um, that'll make sure that when you when your wheels touch the ground, these spoilers come up or air brakes or whatever you want to call them. Okay, so again, um, I'm not doing anything with the airplane right now; it's flying itself. But as soon as you feel comfortable with the approach, uh, you can disengage the autopilot. So if you have the runway in sight, which in this type of weather you do, you can disengage it now or you can wait. But I'm going to disengage now. Now my auto throttle is still on. I'm just controlling the airplane. Um, the, the airplane is still controlling its own speed. But you want to make sure to take that off before you touch down. throttles off and now the airplane is completely in my control. Get this center line. And there we have it. That's an ILS landing, everyone, on a Boeing 747. If this video helped you out, please uh, leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, I don't know why the gear went up. Anyways, um, leave a comment, leave a, a like, and um, subscribe if you if you think you're going to want some more tutorial videos, and I'll be sure to make one. Thanks for watching.